All right, so today we're going to finish operation with polynomials, and what we're going to be talking about today is just how to multiply them. So I'm going to start off by giving you a moment to get all of this written down. Additionally, the highlight feature is not working properly, so anything that is underlined or bolded should be highlighted on your paper, or underlined if you don't have a highlighter. Right? Uh, I'll give you a couple minutes just to write that down, or when I see everyone has it written down. we're going to discuss will be the most important one of the entire lesson. So that is why I'm giving you enough time to get everything written down so that you can give this your undivided attention. The rest of the lesson flows from this concept. Take a moment, finish writing it down, highlight the stuff, and then be ready to listen. first two examples, I'm going to explain them very clearly, very slowly, very carefully, and I will be using more writing and more showing of work than you would generally need to do. So just understand, for the sake of the notes, write it down as I do it. When we get to doing more of these problems, you can trim down a lot of these steps and do more of it in your head. But for the sake of understanding what's going on here, please write it down as is and then also ask questions as they come up, because this is the most important concept of the day. To start, we are multiplying with monomials, and the distributive property comes up a lot, but the first major concept that you're gonna hear is you're basically adding the exponents on the variables. This is kind of the shortcut way to think about it, so let me do a first, the first few examples with you, and then you will hopefully uh, pick up the main idea. Number one, we have a monomial multiplying another monomial. And the way I'm going to rewrite it is as follows. This x is an x1, so I'm just going to put down 1x. It's multiplying with the 3. But then, x squared, which is also multiplying with the 3, I'm not going to write it as x squared. I'm going to write it as its expanded form, meaning x times x. It says x squared, so that means you have two x's. The next thing to realize is that multiplication can happen in any order. For example, 3 times 2 is 6. And then 2 times 3 is also 6. six. So it doesn't matter that it's in this order. I can rewrite it with the 3 in the front and then all three of those x's following the number three. Now the reason why I did that, again, something that you will likely just do in your head once you practice this enough, is that we can now nicely organize ourselves for the final answer. The three has nothing to multiply with, but we have x, x, x. So I'm not gonna write down three x's in my answer. I'm gonna write down x 
to the third power. To the third power. Very good. And that's the final answer. But before you realize, oh, we're done now, go back to the notes. You are basically adding the exponents on the variable. The x had a 1. This other x had a 2. You are just adding those together. 1 plus 2 is 3. That's the basic idea. We will eventually get to the exponent chapter where you will have a better understanding why. But uh, this is the main reason why this shortcut happens. And you will not always need to write out this much work. It's just for the sake of the notes. Let's look at number two, though. And then, by all means, ask any clarification questions you have. This is the most important concept of the lesson, and it needs to be done right. Second example, we again have two monomials multiplying together. I'm going to write it in the expanded form, meaning the 2 has nothing else happening to it. But x squared can be written as x times x. We're multiplying it by y. And that's the first term for the first monomial. The second monomial, we're multiplying by 3. And then we have an x cubed. So three x's are being expanded. And then a single letter y at the end. And we have now expanded the second problem. Again, not something you always have to do. Just understand the concept. If you want to do it every time, it's fine. Just like before, the order in which you multiply numbers and variables doesn't matter. You can always rearrange it. So I'm going to put the numbers in front, 2 times 3. Six. We'll get, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. And then xx, and then three more x's. So 1, 2, 3. And then we have two y's. So y and y. Once everything is reordered, then yes, start combining and doing the operations. So 2 times 3 is? 6. six. And then what are we going to put as the exponent? Oops, I put the other 2 there. Let's that really quickly. Hold on. Come on. There we go. Let me just get the other 2 x's there. Fix that dot. All right, here we go. What will be the exponent on that x? Let me get a hand raised. Mallory. Five. Five is correct. And then what's going to be with the y's? Brooke. Two. Two. So 6x5 y squared would be the final answer. And that is the basic idea. Again, we're adding the exponents. So maybe right above the problem, show how the x squared and the x cubed added and that's how we got x5. And then y1 and then another y1 added together. And that's how we got y squared. The next batch of problems introduce the distributive property. But are there any clarification questions before we get to that? Just to make sure you understand what we just did. Maybe you want to know why one of the exponents are the way they are. Just uh, please ask clarification questions if there's something you're still kind of fuzzy on. Yes, Race? Um, if one of the y's was a y squared, would it just be 6x um, to the fifth power and y cubed? That would be correct, yes. Okay. Because you'd just be adding 2 and 1, and then you would get 3. Absolutely. Very good question. Any other clarification questions before things get a little harder with the distributive property? I'll give you a moment to set up the next two problems, and then we'll go over how to do them. But it's pretty much the same idea. Doing what we just did with the exponents and then adding them together, that's essentially what we're doing for the rest of the lesson. You just now have the distributive property making the problem look more involved with more steps. Take a moment, write those down, and then we'll keep going.
So we have 2x, and it is distributing to 3x squared first. Now, for the rest of these examples, I'm not going to write it out with all of this extra work shown because it really crowds the workspace. And I want you thinking about the basic rule. We are adding the exponents on the variables. That's basically what's happening here. So 2x times 3x squared. Well, what's going to be the number part of this final answer? Just the number. Cal? 6. 6. How would you get that? 2 times 3. 2 times 3. You get 6. Now for the x part. There's an x1. What's going to be the exponent on this x right here? Flip. Cube. Cube. Where would you get it from? You add the 1 and 2. You add 1 and 2. When you add those together, you get x cubed. Very good. The distributive property is going to both terms inside of the parentheses. So I'll do the next one in green. Again, 2x is now multiplying negative 4y. What will be the number part of that final answer? The number part. Chadrick? Negative 8. And how'd you get it? 2 times negative 4. 2 times negative 4, negative 8. And then, slight uh, thinking question. We have an x1 and a y1. What's going to be written down when those get multiplied together? Jessica? Yeah. Incorrect. Good try. Good try. Add Four. Incorrect. I haven't heard a letter. I'm hearing numbers right now, but I was expecting to hear some letters as the, uh, as the answer okay. right there. Dylan? Y. XY. Why are we not doing anything with the exponents, but we did in all the other cases? Tyler. It's not the same variable. Absolutely correct. We have an x and a y. They're not the same variable, so you don't add the exponents together. You keep everything as is. It's just x1, y1. Jessica, you got that. Addie, you got that as well. And, and you're not the first two to, to say that today. Some other people did say make the exponent two, right? But that's why you leave it as is. And that's it. That's the final answer right there. Yes, Cal. Um, oh, so try number four on your own, by the way. So you don't add the 2x1 on the outside of the parentheses? You don't add it to this right here? Like, you don't add it to the final answer? Oh, no, of course not. Um, this 2, this 2 multiplied with the negative 4 to make that negative 8, so the 2's gone. And then the x and the y just came down to be part of the final answer right there. So they are there. They just kind of got multiplied through. I'm going to give you a moment to do number four. It's a little harder. And most people today have gotten the first distribution correct, but made mistakes on the second two. So really set your goal to be uh, at least getting the first distribution correct. If you make mistakes on the other two, then uh, you are very much on par anyway with everyone else. I'll give you a minute to come up with what you think, and I'll take a look at your answers. Yeah. They are not like terms, because that, that's this x cubed, and there's no y over here, but there's a y right here. Good question, though. That is correct. Yeah, but would you include this? Would you do the second Of course, yeah. You distribute it to all three terms. So you have this three times? Yes, you have that three times, yep. The question was, is x squared y cubed being distributed all three times? Yes, it is. This goes to the middle term, and it goes to the last term. Same copy. Very good question. Good. Try to get the second term now. Okay. The whole thing. And it's correct, I think. Yes, it is. Very good job. Very good. Very good. 
take a cow? Yes, you also just put that word around and put the C at the end. But if that's still correct, very good. The middle term has a small error, but everything else is correct. That is correct. Yes, that's good. Very good. Lot of mistakes. The first term, the three is wrong. Middle term, something was left off. And then the last term, you didn't even address that one just yet. So, good. At least those variables are correct. Just five. Let's go over the answer, though, so we can uh, keep up with time. For this one, I'm going to walk you through it, and if there's a clarification question at the end, please raise your hand and ask. The first term, there's a 1 in front of x squared. That's multiplying with 2. 1 times 2 is 2. x squared and x cubed are multiplying together. But what do we do with the exponents? We add them. We add them together. So x squared and x cubed would multiply to make x. Five. Five. Five to the fifth power. Y cubed and Y squared would multiply to make Y to the fifth power again. This is the first term. This is the first part. You then have to distribute to the middle term, which just says negative 1 XZ. So 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. But you don't have to actually write the 1 there, so I'll just leave that off to the same term x squared times x1, again, add the exponents. 2 plus 1 makes x cubed. Now here's one of the parts that people they have made mistakes on throughout the day. The y cubed is being distributed to the middle term, but there is no y in the middle term. So the y cubed just tags along and gets multiplied with your final answer. There was nothing to do with it. In addition to that, the letter Z is a Z to the first power, but no other letter Z was being distributed to it. So the single letter Z also tags along for the final answer. Any questions on the middle term? Yes, Jalen. So how you got the X cubed just, was just you used the first X and then you just, okay. Well, the first two X's and then one X right there. Oh, okay. <coughs> Last term, uh, more, more simplistic than I think people realize, but you're, uh, you're distributing to a positive 1. You're literally multiplying x squared y cubed by 1. What do we know about multiplying anything by the number it's 1? It's the same. It's the same, exactly. So you just leave it as x squared y cubed, and then that would be your final answer. If you got that very good, and if not, hopefully you understand your mistakes, but let me get some questions. Cal? It's okay if you put the ones in front of the last two. Um, it is perfectly fine to put the ones there. On the end of course exam, they would not be printed there, but you're not, you don't lose points for having them there. Doc? Like, on the last term, it's okay to write them. Yeah, of course. Yep, it's fine. Yep. Any other questions? Well, then here's the last part of the lesson. How to multiply when it's not monomials, when you have binomials and trinomials being involved. I will again give you a moment to set up the notes. This is the last thing that we're doing today. And as a heads up, your test on Friday will have at least three questions that use the box method. So as long as you know how to do the box method correctly, you already have three of the test questions taken care of. I will give you a minute or two to set this up, and then we'll go over it.
can stop after example five is written and we'll write out example six when we get to it. I just wanna make sure we get to uh, everything before the period ends. So just get example five set up and then, and then when you look up, I'll know you're done. Or if you write really fast, then sure, get six down, but just get at least get number five written down. Essentially, with the box method, you are doing the first two things that we have been doing. You're multiplying the terms, you're adding the exponents on the variables. But sometimes you will have to combine like terms at the end. Sometimes you won't have to combine any like terms. But you need to start being on the lookout for those like terms at this point when you do these types of problems. So here we go. The box method is very simple. The first thing is the setup. We have a binomial multiplying another binomial. A binomial has two terms. So we are going to make a two by two box grid set up just like this, a two by two. The x plus two will go on top where you will put the x over one column and then the two over the other. And then the x squared and the negative one in the second binomial, that will go on the side. X squared.